you be my neighbor. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I have the GoPro so I can get a nice widescreen view of this. I'm going to crawl under here with the GoPro to show you. I have everything installed under here. So I got my transmission in, got my drive shaft in. This light's actually so bright it's kind of blowing us out. Got the eBay exhaust is still hanging in here. I actually am really pleased uh, with how it sounds and how it's held up. I don't know what it cost. I know it's eBay exhaust though because it doesn't have any branding on it at all. So uh, a lot of people laughed because I welded I welded the exhaust onto the two bolt flange. So I got these cones you can see here that adapt from three inch down to two and a quarter and that's what's on this thing so I got cones that went from three inches to two inches and I cut them so they would fit perfectly and then join up to this also my flexes ended up cracking it had really nice flexes on it but I blew them out with the amount of exhaust coming out of this thing I got my twin disc clutch in all the regular stuff is installed as per usual i put an old o2 sensor in here i had a plug and then that's the holly o2 sensor everything else is ready to go uh really neat addition here is a drive shaft speed sensor so i'm gonna wire this guy up to the holly there's a couple ways you can do it and i want to explore all of them so that's what we're gonna do i have uh two means of inputting and i will go over that but other than that, everything is bolted up underneath here. All I need now is I got to get this. This was the wire for the. Oh man, if my brain would work tonight, that'd be fantastic. For the water pump for the heat exchanger, which I removed and I pulled all of the. I got to get these uh, zippy ties out of here. They were holding up the water lines all the way to the front of the car. I got to get these guys out and then pop rivet over the hole where the water lines were coming out back here uh, another thing i want to do is put connectors on this uh, i'm going to figure out what the hell i want to do with it pardon me i think i have deutschworks four four pin so i actually have two outputs on here and it was for the way he uses it is for one goes into the stock ecu so you can do like rolling idle and whatnot and then the other one you can use for something else. So I have two. I might just put a four pin Deutschworks. I don't think I have a two pin. I think I have four pin ones. So I might put that on and then I will, I could actually run wires for both inputs that I have and swap back and forth easily because both will be putting out the uh, output. So I can actually wire both and swap in between. Anywho, uh, thought you might like to see that. Not bad at all. That's the wire for the heat exchanger pump. I'm putting everything in the front. I have everything on order. I'll show it to you when I get it. Pretty cool, I think. It's going to work out. Definitely going to be much neater and cleaner. I mean, this thing had about 10 gallons of water in it, at least. And we tried icing it on the dyno, messing around. And none of it really made a huge difference. So I figured, why have such a gigantic amount to cool and carry and mess with? Uh, we'll mess with a much smaller amount and an easier setup, less weight, less complexity, less hoses everywhere. So that's coming up soon. Another quick update is I got all my interior back together. I finally pulled out the old wideband. I had an AEM wideband in here for the stock computer. So I ran the dash wiring down through there. I left enough bundled up in there that I can pull the dash out. I'm still deciding how if I want to just mount it to this. Uh, once it's mounted, it's hard to pull the screen in and out. You can't pull it up and you can't really pull it down. So I don't know what I'll do. Maybe I'll mount uh, magnets and then stick it, mount a magnet here and put a steel plate for like a cell phone in the back. The other thing I did is the G has like a double glove box. So nothing was really in here. 
So I was like, why don't I put the Terminator in there? And the X-Max fits in here basically perfectly. There is no extra room at all. In fact, I'm gonna connect the transmission connector. So this car has, well, you can see, I used to have the ECU laying on the floor when I was playing with the wiring. I have since cleaned up pretty much all of it. There's almost nothing you can see other than when you get to a point where, uh, you know, you have your head under there anyway. So this car has the CD09, obviously, and it's using drive-by wire. So I have an X-Max and I have a free transmission input. I don't have a transmission harness, so I just bought, I looked up what the connectors were and I got, this is the transmission harness. So I have this pinned to vehicle speed input, which I have basically a two wire vehicle speed sensor as a drive shaft speed sensor. So what I wanna do is quick wire it uh, change some stuff in the tune for like 4L80E and spin the wheels, the drive shaft, and see if I get some sort of speed input. And if I do, then I'm hitting the ground running and saving a lot of stuff because as far as I know, I would probably like to test this. I think I have plenty of spare inputs. I'm, I believe I'm only using one for flex fuel in. There's four inputs and you can do one as a digital speed frequency, but you can't do two wire like this as a, whatever they call it, a sine wave, non-square wave. So I got another part for that. So if you did not have an X-Max, you basically need a five volt signal in square, like a Hall effect. You could wire a Hall effect to your transmission or drive shaft, but I'm using what I got. And some guys have like a T56, or similar transmission with vehicle speed out. This transmission does not. It uses, it has ABS sensors on the diff, and I think it might, it has ABS sensors in the front, obviously, but that's what the stock ECU gets its speed sensors from, and this specifically says you can't use VSS outputs. So what this does is you wire, this goes to the uh, transmission this plus and minus here, and then you wire it up like a five volt sensor. And then the output is the signal in to the holly. And that's what you set up as a speedometer input and then scale it. And uh, that's it. And it's so small that you can shrink wrap it into the wiring next to the transmission or next to the holly. It would definitely be easiest to do it next to the holly because that's where you could pick up your five volt and your input without extending all of those wires. So you can only do two. So this was my backup plan if everything else didn't work. And maybe I'll give it to one of my friends that might need to use it and we can do more research on it because if I can't use it on a front ABS sensor and the transmission input works directly into my ADE harness, which I don't have an ADE, uh, that's the solution. So I know these work, people say these works, but I got it just in case I may not even use it. That's all my info right now. So yeah, she's cleaning up, almost there. All I have to do is, uh, my fuel line is coming. It is not here yet. So that is still wide open. So I have the fuel pump to relay disconnected. Otherwise that'd be pretty cool to just get showered with fuel. So it would start right now if I had the fuel upgrades and then I could test the clutch, but the pedal works, so here's to thinking the clutch is okay. The other thing I did is I cleaned up a lot of wiring in the engine bay. I'm still gonna do more of it, but yeah, when I threw the holly in and got it running, I just drove it. And then again, another thing, like I said, is uh, the heat exchanger lines used to go all the way to the trunk to a giant trunk tank, and uh, icing it and having the volume didn't seem to really matter at all. Uh, maybe it would if I drag raced, but we have heat soaked it on the dyno and then iced it down, iced the blower, put ice in the thing, and it netted me like 10 horsepower or something ridiculous. It, it made almost no difference. So having all that extra water in the car makes no sense. So here's the pump from the trunk. I'm gonna, I bought a eBay, like a one inch by 15 inch by 24 inch and it has a filler neck on it. So I can mount it up in here real skinny. It'll have more surface area and it'll have a filler neck. 
right here, I'm gonna drill like a hole saw. I can fill it and then it can gravity feed into the pump, pump into the blower and then push back down into that. And so I will have like a couple feet and the heat exchanger itself has a drain and a fill on it, minimizing uh, all sorts of redundant connections and fillers and everything else. So that also frees up room in the trunk for that nitrous bottle over there. So yeah, anyway, what we want to see is a fuel. We want to have some fuel left over to spray a little bit of dry boy in on top of the blower. And after I get the vehicle speed sensor wired, I'm going to tear the front end apart and install. I have the entire LOJ eight rib upgrade kit and I have the Holden balancer with the 10 rib, eight rib, 10% overdrive. So I will have eight rib. The snout already has eight ribs. It's just only using six. So all of that'll get done. That's all exciting. All the heat exchanger stuff will get done. We're doing a lot here. So yeah, so there's my kind of combined update. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll see how my vehicle speed adventures work. It'll be neat to have vehicle speed because you can even wire in like torque converter. If you had a T56, you have that reverse lockout solenoid. You can wire that as the torque converter thing. So you can say over like a couple miles an hour, 15, five miles an hour to lock out the, the solenoid to make it easy to hit reverse. Uh, other things you can think of, be creative, right guys? And then there's a transmission temperature input wire I'm thinking about wiring that for no reason, so I can see a temperature of something. I might do like a blower inlet temperature, so I can get IAT before the rotors, because the IAT sensor is after the intercooler. Obviously, you want to know what your crucial temperature is if you need to pull timing. It would be neat, however, to install another one, like here or here, and see inlet temperature and then see the rise through the blower. So if you have 55 degree air coming in and that 155, once you get really rolling with some horsepower, uh, you know you're getting a 100 degree gain. That's the delta. So that's the important stuff. It's neat to see the delta every now and then. So uh, otherwise I could just put the temperature sensor in the bumper and see outside temp, but the car already has that outside temp in the HVAC system. So Oh, I also wired uh, MSD Boy. More on this to come. Uh, this is far neater product than I ever thought it would be. So we have a full install where it's doing all sorts of wackiness on my friend's car. And here it's PWMing my fans and running the fuel pump. And it will also run the intercooler pump. I can tell the Holly to run it uh, on demand or whenever certain things happen. So that's cool too, right? So... We're going to cut there, and I'm going to get my VSS stuff rolling so I don't just hot air windbag everybody to death. But there's some neat stuff for you to think about.